ladies and gentlemen, that today I would like to present you my try to implement this linear convolution algorithm on CPU with factorization. So at the end of the um, this presentation, you will know how easy it is to add um, uh, uh, open MP optimizations to the uh, some algorithm and whether or not it would always give you what you expected to. So what is uh, convolution uh, algorithm? In terms of images, convolution algorithm is uh, creating new image based on the input image. So we are using for this purposes uh, some kernel which is multiplied with some neighbor of the current pixel, which we are working on currently. So how we can apply linear convolution on the image. If linear convolution means that we are working in 1D space, <clears throat> but image is located in 2D space. Do you guys know how we can apply linear convolution on 2D space image. It was a question. Okay, it's really easy. We just can divide our image to row. And like um, divide our image to rows or columns. And this row of units of just uh, 1D space object. And then we can uh, select our loops through each pixels in this strip, row strip, and apply kernel to the neighbor of this pixel. It could be shown on the next slide. So this is a kernel. And we move this kernel for each pixels in this strip and multiply in values of the corresponded pixels in kernel and in the image and obtain the result image. By the way, usually the sum of the weights in kernel is equal to one. And in kernel, we have um, real values. And in image, we have integer values. And as you can see at the left side of the picture, there is no corresponding uh, pixels for the kernel, for the appropriate kernel points. So for these purposes, we can prepend our strip with some pixels. Uh, I highlighted these pixels with yellow color on this slide. And we can assign some values to these prepended pixels. Usually the better solution is to uh, replicate the border pixels like this one to each of these five positions. And mathematical formula could be seen on this slide. Uh, as you can see, the here i is a uh, Input image, K is the kernel, and R is the resulting image. And here is just a um, uh, linear product of two vectors. One vector is the K, is the kernel, and I is a chunk of the input image corresponding to this kernel. And as you can see, the J in index could be negative. And that's and we fix in this issue with prepending uh, several pixels uh, at the beginning of the strip. Uh, amount of this uh, prepending pixel is equal to the radius of the kernel. And the length of the kernel is uh, double radius plus one. So the size of the kernel should be odd one pixel, we need to multiply it with the uh, original pixel. 
and also we need to prepend uh, not only prepend the strip with the pixels but we also need to add suffix to the strip it is not shown on this slide by it, but it is clear that we also need to prepend to for to add suffix with a replicated border at the end of the strip so let's proceed with our presentation here there is a interface which i used for implementation of the convolution algorithm this uh, interface is interacting with a uh, map image. Here we can get the size of the image, like width and height of the image, amount of bytes, uh, every pixel weights, and we can uh, copy and roll to some buffer, and then uh, copy this buffer back to the image with right row member. So this is a loop through each row in our image. This is uh, like included to the horizontal pass function. Here we are using this accessor provided on the previous picture. Uh, image accessor when we uh, copy data from the image to the uh, our data to blur buffer, which is just a vector. And then we performing some processing like multiplication of this kernel and then write uh, data back from the result buffer to the image. And um, for the first uh, iteration, we need to provide our buffers with uh, appropriate sizes. So this slide shows <coughs> the initialization of these buffers. So as you can see, we calculate the buffer size based on the width of the image plus two radius. And then we see if uh, this obtained size could be evenly divisible by the kernel size. If it couldn't be divisible without a reminder, then we add one more. Uh, we add several pixels to the size of the uh, our buffer to make this buffer even dividable by the size of the kernel. And then we resize our input buffer and output buffer to the same amount of pixels. So <laughs> if you see this cycle, we can see that every iteration in this cycle is independent from each other. And uh, it will be good to uh, make these uh, iterations in uh, separate threads. And it is uh, very elegant and easy to add multi threading to this code with OpenMP library. So if you see this uh, line pointed by arrow, it's all we need to add the multi-threading to our original code. Uh, I have highlighted this line on the next slide. So here we just provide appropriate uh, in OpenMP instruction in this name on P parallel for. And we have we can provide several customizations for this uh, instruction including how many threads we would have in each in each thread uh, how many threads we would have in our thread pool uh, and then a schedule of static state static this means um, how each how it iterations will be 
divided between uh, threads and thread loop. Uh, static means that uh, we just uh, uh, divide amount of our iterations to amount of threads and thread pool and uh, statically assign this amount of uh, iterations to each thread and thread pool. Uh, this could work if we uh, are sure that each iteration could take uh, uh, service almost the same amount of time in comparison to another iteration. And I uh, decided to use uh, static scheduling here. Also, OpenMP provides dynamic scheduling. It uh, works. It, it should be uh, written like schedule. Then instead of static keyword, you write here uh, dynamic keyword and then comma, and then how many threads you, how many iterations you would uh, like to assign to each iteration at the beginning. And then OpenMP performs load balancing of the threads. If some threads become, uh, uh, already did his iterations, uh, load balancer uh, assign new iterations to this thread. And this makes um, all threads and thread pool be busy until the end of the uh, cycle. Also, we have this uh, private keyword here uh, and in parentheses uh, I provided the names of the appropriate buffers. I think it should be pretty easy to understand what is the purposes of this private keyword. Guys, do you happen to know what is the purpose of this private keyword? And what happened with this um, with these buffers like data to blur and result data in each thread. Is it like a thread local data? Yes, all right. So <clears throat> every thread is provided to its own local copy of these uh, buffers. This uh, allows us to uh, have no any synchronization uh, between threads to access the same buffers. Let's proceed with the next slide. Uh, for the, there are several articles which I used during preparation of the code and this presentation. I share, decided to share them with you. You can find these articles on this page. Why I'm using uh, here the linear convolution? I'm using it for Gaussian blur. Uh, so Gaussian blur is, uh, is used to, is, are using two linear convolutions, one vertical convolution and one horizontal convolution. Uh, and uh, uh, kernel size could, could be quite big. Uh, in my case, here the radius of the kernel is equal to 50 pixels and it's a quite big amount of pixels and uh, I decided to use uh, vectorization here. So what is vectorization? Uh, processors uh, have a special set of registers uh, is quite a am big amount of bits in it which so-called SIMT registers. And uh, depends on the technology, you can uh, have 128 lens register or 256 lens register or even 512 lens register. Uh, last uh, registers are used in AVX 212 technology and lens of the registers with uh, 200 and 
350x6 is used in AVX2 technology for Intel processors. So <clears throat> you can uh, put on this register, if it is a VX2 register, you can put uh, eight floats in one register and put eight float in another register and uh, you can perform same operation uh, at once on 11 values. So yeah, there is a appropriate intrinsics at PC and you can use it to add to uh, eight values to another eight values at once. And it is done simultaneously. So let's discuss this process trip function. I already mentioned it in one of the previous slides. Here it is. It is called from the horizontal path function. Let's discuss it. Here we have outer loop and inner loop. Outer loop is done for each pixel in strip. And inner loop is done for each value in kernel. So here I would like to vectorize this inner loop because it goes through the kernel, which is quite big. So here I provided a strip. We have yellow pixel prepended as a replicating border. We have data pixels highlighted with blue and uh, we have current pixels. And we need to properly align our data because this vectorization uh, intrinsics some of them requires data to be aligned. And uh, if you provide non-aligned data to them, you will have a crash. Uh, so uh, we need somehow provide uh, for each pixel aligned data. For instance, if we consider this pixel uh, this vertical lines, it's uh, borders of aligned data, 32 pixels of aligned data. So if, if you took this pixel, you are currently found, try, trying to find resulting value for this pixel, you will see that uh, kernel begins uh, not at the border of aligned data. And that's why I decided to pass to the um, appropriate intrinsics. Data started not here, but uh, two pixels previously on the border of the aligned data. And to get rid from the result of this um, two pixels, I add also to kernel two pixels with uh, zero values and when to, multiply this uh, yellow pixels with the zero pixels and next blue pixel with zero pixel uh, with zero weight, it will not uh, influence to the result of the our linear multiplication of vectors. So as you can see, uh, we need uh, several kernels we need kernel started with zero or with green weight. We need kernel starting up prepended with one zero pixels. And we need kernel prepended with two zero weight values. And we need kernel prepended with three zero weight values. So I, here I just uh, uh, make a current point of the kernel to different kernels depending on the reminder.
also here I just uh, determine the start of the kernel in the data. I mean, uh, this start on the aligned border. And here as the way how you can provide vectorization for this inner loop with OpenMP. For this purpose, there is an OpenMP seamed uh, instruction and you could parameter, parameterize it with several other instructions like reduction and aligned Aligned is pretty easy. It just says that the data you are passing to this or using in, inside this loop are properly aligned by 32 bytes. And uh, <clears throat> one issue which we have here is that our image data is uh, has several channels of uh, color data. I, I'm working with here with RGBA data. And um, as a result, we, <laughs> we have uh, several channels mixed. Uh, they are not uh, um, located in continuous uh, blocks. They are mixed with each and other. And to get appropriate pixel, I need to have several calculated indexes. For the kernel index, I need to, kernel index I am obtaining by dividing the current index by n, where n is the amount of uh, color channels in input data. And channel I am obtaining by modular division of the index of the loop by n. And then I just multiply and accumulate the data. Uh, let's return to this reduction instruction, why it is needed and how it is vectorized. Uh, so the reduction is just in this uh, line of code where um, data is accumulated to some uh, variable, but we can do it in vectorized fashion. There is interesting article which I used during the preparation and on page 16 it is uh, mentioned that um, <coughs> we can do this reduction with in vectorized fashion. So here is the similar example when we have some cycle and so we uh, uh, accumulate the values of the array to some variable sum, sum. And how it could be done with vectorization. So uh, there is a special horizontal addition separations um, for this SIMD register, which we can use for these purposes. And here the <coughs> block of the assembly code uh, with comments. And here we set the uh, SIMD register to zero. Here we set uh, non sim register, which is used for index to zero. So we handle this reduction reduction loop, similar to this one, but uh, written in assembly. And we add uh, the value <coughs> to our sim register value from the vector. We increase our index, then we uh, decide whether we need to go out of the loop or not. And then when the, uh, at the end of the loop, we just 
performance is horizontal ad operations. Uh, what what they perform? For instance, XMM register can hold four floats or four ins. And um, first call to this PHADD instruction just adds uh, first and second uh, float in this register, then third and fourth, then also again first and second, and then again third and fourth indexed values. And uh, as you can see, <coughs> we so we have the new values here. We have also four floats, but several floats are same. For instance, first float and third float is same, and uh, second float and fourth float are also same. <clears throat> and when we call the separation again, then we will have all four floats the same and equal to the sum of the values originally was loaded to XM zero register. <clears throat> and then we move um, value from the register back to the uh, uh, common register. And let's discuss the result of this uh, vectorization with OpenMP. Um, I would like to notice that I will not be able to achieve by, um, good results. I will, uh, I, I achieved only 13% gain in performance with this OpenMP vectorized loop. And also I tried to uh, investigate the assembly code and didn't find the, this PHADD horizontal add operation. So I can suggest that the um, loop was not vectorized properly. Uh, usually a compiler said to the developer with a warning that uh, uh, loop was not vectorized, but in this case, compiler was sil silent, unfortunately. So I decided to vectorize this loop uh, manually with uh, SSE AVX to uh, technologies. I would like to show you this loop in the Xcode project. It's, it's become quite big. This is uh, this inner loop starts in from 257 line till the 306 line. It's not so big, but it can be uh, placed in one slide. So I decided to divide it in several slides. So first several operations consist of loading data from the buffer to the uh, register, to the SSE register. It's uh, with the length of the 128 bits. And as you remember, I told that uh, we have mixed channels. We have no any continuous areas of uh, this one channel value. But uh, for the purposes of this vectorized operations, I need to combine uh, values of channels to one blocks with continuous values. So it is can, it can be clearly seen from this uh, picture. So I have input data in RGB format. We have red, green, blue, and alpha channel mixed. 
but fortunately um, uh, there is an appropriate intrinsics by using which we can uh, shuffle or permutate the channels around and obtain continuous areas with one channel. The name of this uh, function or uh, intrinsics is shuffle epi8 function. So you provide the mask and input data to it. Mask is this part of the picture. It contains indexes, how in indexes should go from, from the original data to the resulting data. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's consider the next uh, couple of lines from this cycle. Mm. So we, we, we lo loaded uh, values which are um, charts, each value of the channel is uh, uh, eight bit, one, one byte. But kernel contains float values, is, which is uh, four bytes. And we need, before, before multiplication, we need to convert our eight bits to float. For this purpose, there is appropriate intrinsics with this name, with this name CVTEPO8. And it like um, convert, it takes not the whole part of the input values, it takes only half of them. And for each value, it convert to 32 bits value. Uh, then we can write sheet the input data and uh, call this uh, intrinsics once again and have red and green data be filled. First, we are working with blue and alpha data for, for four pixels. And then we are working with uh, red and green data for four pixels. Then we need to load kernel itself. <clears throat> Do you happen to know how many kernel values we need to load in this stage? If you look on this picture. Um, it's easy to answer, it's we need uh, for this data, we need two kernel weights, and for next amount of data, we need next two values of the kernel. So in total, we need four values of the kernel to be loaded from memory to the appropriate SIMT register. So uh, this uh, register is length of 128 could fit four values of the kernel and I load them. And then I need to, uh, next operation requires me to have a 256 register. So I cast this input data to uh, 256 register and it uh, places the data from this register to, to the low part of this register. And, and then in, with this intrinsics, I uh, copy data from low part of the register to the high part of the register. And I would have like similar data if I divide this register to two parts, I will have similar data for these two parts. Then I um, use 
since I need for this uh, block of data, I need to only two values and uh, it, it should be repeated four times when value should be repeated four times and another value of the uh, kernel should be repeated four times to be able to multiply with the input data of the image. I use this permutate function or intrinsics, how it works. It, <coughs> it takes first, uh, you, you provide there also mask and mask contains uh, four zeros and four ones. And it means that the first uh, part, first float of the input register will be repeated four times. And then the second float of the input register will, will be uh, repeated four times also to the next chunk of the register. And now I can multiply this channels data with kernel data. And then I need uh, the reduction. Uh, we already discussed this reduction in one of the previous slides. This block of the assembly code where this PHIDD functions were used. So I used them as well in my manual um, procedure. So it's appropriate in three intrinsics which can be used in C++ code and it has name, uh, has this name. And then, yeah, here I color it how it works. So we have called this PA and uh, DD intrinsics. Uh, first time we obtain this result in the same register and second time we obtain this result. So in the first four floors we would have um, some of the red channels, so four pixels, and another four same values with a uh, sum of the green channels for four pixels. Uh, as I mentioned here, yeah, uh, we, are, we have like two uh, conversions from the uh, chart data to the flow data. And we, then we are going to shift it. We are shifting input data and also uh, obtain next part of the data. Here I just mentioned the same uh, same operations for the next part of the data, which we already covered on previous slides. The only difference is this SRLI uh, intrinsics. It performs the right shift to losing to eight uh, faults. And then we store our data and uh, update the current indexes in uh, input image and in the kernel. The purpose is to have this uh, index uh, aligned. I used here the, the reminder. So yeah, what I have what gain on performance I have this manual vectorization. I obtained uh, 120 percent increase in performance, which is quite good and much better than gain from just OpenMP uh, procedure of vectorization. Maybe I did some mistake with this OpenMP vectorization procedure. So if you guys have some ideas for this, please share it with me. I uh, created for this purposes the appropriate Git repository, which I uh, link for which I provided here. And you can create pull requests for this 
purposes and I can review it and commit it inside. And also I would like you to show, I would like to show you the resulting application. was a little bit lazy and didn't done the um, switch between algorithms via menu. So I need to slightly change the code before showing you the results. Um, as the first step, let's just, I would like to, to show you the results of the just plain loops without vectorization. So it took all point to all nine seconds without vectorized uh, optimizations. Then let's check with OpenMP vectorization. It's little, little, very little bit better, like 0 0.2, 2 seconds. And let's check with manual vectorization what would we happen, what would we obtain. As you can see, we have 0.07 seconds. It's more than two times faster. It works quite smoothly. Also, I tried to perform the loop unwinding, but I have not included in my presentation, but I can show you the result of the loop unwinding as well. So I just um, divide loop of uh, just um, increase the loop counter by four and manually do four loops in one iteration for, for original loop iterations in one new iteration. Now, as you can see, the result is also quite good. It's a little bit worse than manual vectorization, but much better than OpenMP vectorization. Uh, that's all from my side. Do you have any questions?